what Salisbury Cathedral is, it's big. Hello there, this is the 13th century schizoid man with another video. Now, here behind me, as you can see, is the magnificent Salisbury Cathedral, built in 1220 uh, with, the, um, with the Bishop Richard Paul. He pretty much instigated the whole thing. The, um, following the death of King John and the troubles we had there, uh, the Cardinal Guala effectively put um, Richard Paul in charge of Salisbury and he came up with this beautiful uh, cathedral along with the city and um, especially with the arguments between the, uh, the clergy and the, uh, and the military in Old Sarum, <laughs> the rest is history. So, soon we're going to be taking a nice tour inside of this and uh, look at all the, all the magnificence of it and, uh, and get into a bit more history. The chap there in the middle, on the bottom, the, the man holding the cathedral in his hand is Richard Paul the man I spoke about earlier. He oversaw the building of this in its early days of construction. The, um, from 1220 and by 1258 the main building had been completed. So there we have it. And that is the man there. That is his effigy. The, um, now legend has it that when the um, they're relocating from Old Sarum to the new grounds. It's got a longbow, fired the arrow, which sort of was supposed to be hitting the new grounds. Of course, it hit a deer, and the deer decided to go off and, uh, and collapse somewhere. Here, in fact. So, well, there we have it. It's probably not true, but it's a good folk tale that's a, 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 a emerged around the time of uh, the, <laughs> the cathedral and the building. And, now Salisbury Cathedral is a living working cathedral meaning there are still sermons, there are still congregations, it's a church. So naturally, we couldn't do much dialogue inside of the building. Hence, you have me to do the narration. Let's get stuck in. As you can tell, this cathedral was sponsored by Guinness. Now, as I said earlier, the um, Richard Paul, had completed the main body of the building by around sort of 1258, I think three minutes to one. So, which is quite a long day. In all seriousness, he had completed the, um, the main body of the cathedral. And by this, I mean, he's done the nave, he's done the choir, and he's done the transepts. So he's pretty much done the main body of the building. It'll be a long time before it'd be open to the public. And by a long time, I'm talking another 62 years. It won't be open until about 1320. So that's a whole another generation of people. So the people initially seeing this, they could see the structure appearing. They could see all the workers in and toing and throwing, all the beams and all the wagons and the carts. Slowly, as this building is, getting to its height but it's still much like when you see any other uh, architectural project it's pretty much wooden beams this and that there's no real roof uh, and he couldn't work here <laughs> it's uh these are things that in our day and age we can't really manage now take in mind that that the Burj Khalifa was put up in our own lifetime from beginning when it was just in a boardroom, a few people pitching the idea, to its completion, and several years later, constant tourism, boosting the economy of the country. That 
concept back in the 13th century was not even a thing. So we are really are they're talking a long project. So starting with the first stones with William Longsby, uh, who we'll get into later, and Ella, the third um, sort of Earl and Countess of Salisbury, uh, they laid they laid the first foundation stones here. So about 1220. So that is where everything really began. You can really see it. Just by looking at the nave, you can see the amount of architecture got into this. This is a magnificent sight for our eyes. For our eyes. We, in the 21st century, visit this place with awe and wonder. Imagine what it would have felt like in the 13th century where there were no Burj Khalifas. There were no skyscrapers. This is the pinnacle of what the average person in England would have seen. This is it. So that really puts it into perspective. It's a really tall building. This cathedral dominates Salisbury. So no matter where you are, you will see the spire. Although it's not like London where you've got like St. Paul's and all that lot, like dwarfed by these huge buildings around it, and big glass gherkins and stuff. No, this is Salisbury. It's a lot of old streets and so, um, and yes, and just down the road from the cathedral, there's a lovely pub called the New Inn. I suggest anyone visiting Salisbury go in there. You literally, you go out the close and you turn right and it's there. <laughs> you can't miss it. So if you look up at the, the nave, there we go, you can see all the glass and that is Victorian. Do take in mind that this is a really, really old building. Uh, there have been changes in the Tudors. Christopher Wren did altercations to this. Uh, hence, when you look at the the uh, uh, stained glass, it's a Victorian. S the stories they're telling and everything from Noah to the Ark, Jacob's Ladder. Everything is here. Everything tells a story. Um, it's just beautiful. And, uh, and at any time of day you're in there, you'll hear organ music, not always played live, normally on a, like a, probably a CD player or something. Uh, you can see the player as you're going around, but it doesn't matter. It's all ambience. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. Um, and when there is a service, because I have been to services in Salisbury Cathedral, uh, like, a, like a Christmas Eve, for instance, when you have the choir, it's beautiful. Um, you have the choir area. Everyone is sat on these singing beautiful music. Uh, and um, with the whole thing going and we when we were doing this particular filming for this video yeah yeah there's a, a chap in the pulpit and um, he gave a brilliant sermon and I'm not a religious type um, but you can't help but stop and admire when a good beautiful sermon is being said in one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world. Most of the chaps on the uh, on the outside of the, the Western Front, they are Victorian. Most of them, not all of them, most of them. Like, like the um, the statue of Richard Paul was Victorian, so it's no like likeness of uh, Richard himself. Um, not that we know of. Now, there's a bit of controversy 
around 2008 because the old Victorian font needed replacing. Some people were saying it was like replacing for replacement's sake, but a modern one was made. And William Pye was the chap who was commissioned to do it. I personally think it's amazing. It's more of a centerpiece. What everybody has done over history is added to the cathedral. The 21st century needs to make its mark. And William Pye has done just that with his fantastic water feature. So this is perfect. This is beautiful. Yeah, um, I love this feature. And there's some parts, like you see the, you see the tombs of the clergy. You see the tombs of knights. It really hits you just how old this building is. William Longsby is the half-brother of King John and is most famous for winning the Battle of Dam in France, in the wars with John versus France. He utterly defeated the French, he utterly beat them, practically annihilating their entire navy. So that is what he's sort of famed for in that time. And yeah, so here he is laying in state with some fantastic armour, may I add, Good early 13th century armour. Yeah. Now, now Longsby didn't live to old age. He was possibly allegedly poisoned by Hubert de Burr. I'm not saying it's true. All I'm saying is the rat was found when it was excavated in the uh, sort of late 18th century. Um, but a rat was found in his skull traces of arsenic. Mm -hmm. Was de Burr a scallywag? Was he a naughty boy? Don't know. R.I.P. Rat. R.I.P. Edward Heath. He was the Prime Minister from 1970 to 1974. So regardless of, the, of politics, this is a statesman. Um, and as far as I see, should be respected. Hence, added in here. Around 1258, you had the main body done, but other bits naturally would be following suit. Then start to see the cloisters being formed. And as you can see, the, the cloisters are a magnificent thing as well. They are, this is basically where the, the, the monks who were running the place, the clergy, would be effectively distancing themselves from the, the lay people. Um, People could go in and out the cathedral, there'd be servants around here, and it was a working building, it uh, still is now. Uh, but the cloisters are not really used. They're like, it's where you get a bit of peace and quiet, effectively. Um, you don't want the smells of the kitchen, you don't want the um, like people whistling back and forth and everything else. You want a nice quiet area where you can reflect. It's what the day in the life of the monk is really about. 
It's this tranquility, this quiet. How on earth, from their point of view, can you communicate with God if there's all the clutter going around? You need somewhere out of that. And um, just as you go down from the, uh, the cloisters, you end up in the chapter house. Now, it's where the chapter of the cathedral all met. It's a body of people. It's where the meeting is, a meeting house, basically. The chapter house is a meeting house. Now, the Magna Carta is probably the most important document in British history. Outside of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, of course. There's only four surviving copies in the world. I have done a video about the Magna Carta, and I will put a link in the description. And there we have it. That is the magnificent Salisbury Cathedral in all its glory. Now, naturally, there are some parts I just couldn't get, like the tower, the Magna Carta. But there is so much else to be seen here. Anyone coming to Salisbury, I urge you to see this cathedral. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.